Good evening. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, at this time, to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 24. For the Gary, if you don't mind, I'm going to switch to one of these handheld mics. Uh, number three. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter number 24. Uh, this is kind of the first time I've had the opportunity to do so. Um, yesterday was the two months anniversary, you could say, of my wife and I moving here. We got here two months ago yesterday. Um, this is kind of my first opportunity to publicly... <laughs> made us feel like we belong and you've met our needs. You know, I still remember, I still think about uh, when we first got here, the, the pantry shower you, you, uh, you church walked through for us and uh, how you filled our pantry and just met our basic needs You know, as soon as we got here. Um, you made us feel right at home and I can't be, I can't express my gratitude more um, and enough for what you've done for us and how you've welcomed us in. And it's an honor to be a part of the Temple Baptist Church family. Um, so I do want to say thank you um, on behalf of my wife and I for welcoming us in. Um, making us part of the family here and uh, just treating us as well as you have. Uh, Jeremiah chapter number 24. If you're not there already, uh, that's what we'll be. We're going to be starting at verse number 5. Jeremiah chapter 24, verse number 5. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord to the God of Israel, Like these Uh, I'm not a doctor, I don't claim to be one, this is just me doing medical research online. Um, but the human heart is about the size of a fist. Um, and the average human heart will beat about 115,000 times a day. Um, about 115,000 times every day. It'll pump approximately 2,000 gallons of blood each and every day throughout your Bible. Or not your Bible, throughout your body. Um, Um, that's the electrical system. All of these things go on in our human hearts 24-7 involuntarily. You know, there's never a time where I stopped and said, okay, heart, beat now, beat now, beat now. That's not, not how it works. You know, the, the heart is an involuntary muscle. It works the way God designed it to without us doing any thought about it. Um, and that's our human heart. Now, our spiritual heart, however, is the exact opposite. Our spiritual heart is just as important to our life and to our, and to our you know, lifestyle that we have. Amen. But... We have the power to control and to choose what type of spiritual heart we have and, and how it operates. You know, the human heart is completely involuntary. You know, we have nothing to do with it. It just happens. as to what type of heart 
we're going to have. You might wonder what I mean by that. Um, but first, I see that we should have a heart to know God. We read that right here in our, in our text verse. Jeremiah 24, 7. It says, and I will give them a heart to know me. If you flip just a couple pages over to chapter number 29, chapter number 29, verse number 13, the Bible says this. It says, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. That heart to know God. Just want to pose a question. You know, what is your view of God? You know, do you have a desire for God? Now, when I think of a heart to know God, the very first Bible character, the individual I think of, first and foremost in my mind, is King David. And King David is known as the man after God's own heart. heart. God, or the man after God's own heart. If a man got that reputation, I'm sure there's something we can learn from his life. Now, the neat thing about that, that nickname, you might say, or that, that title, the man after God's own heart, is that that was not a Breathe them out. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who's all powerful. He's all loving. He's all knowing. He's He's everywhere. He's all present. He is an amazing God, but He cares enough about each and every one of us to want that intimate, personal relationship. You know, He sent His Son on the, to die on the cross to give us that relationship, that opportunity to serve Him and to love Him and to have that personal relationship with Him. If He would desire to know us. He knows the very number of our, the hairs on our head. He knows our name. With seven billion people in this world, he knows each and every one of our names. He knows things down to the very minutest detail. How many hairs we have on our head. That might be easier to count for some than others. But the one that I think of probably most often is his sin with Bathsheba, you know, the adultery. time he had to preach, he always found a way to fit it in there. He would always say, keep short accounts with God. Keep short accounts with God. He said, he said that almost every time, as a young, you know, third, fourth grader, that doesn't always make your day. It's evident that we're flawed, you know, each and every day. Especially working in the school becomes very evident, you know, sometimes in the relations, the way you handle different different students, it becomes evident, you know, wow, you know, I was not filled with the spirit on that one. You know, that, that was not how I should have reacted to that. I've had those before. I snapped that one student a week or two ago, um, early in the morning, I was just not feeling it, and he hit the wrong button at the wrong time, and I snapped a little bit, and I sat down, and I was like, God, that's not a good way to start this day, he doesn't deserve exercise, I'm, I'm, I'm married, I'm, I'm too slow for that stuff now, I, I'm only 22, but it's not good, I feel like I'm getting old, it's, it's too early, 
Um, I don't like exercise, but it's hard work. It's it's something that's needed. It's something that's And repeatedly, in Exodus chapter number 35, the Bible uses the word willing or willingly to describe the people in their giving, um, in their service, where they willingly gave their materials, they willingly offered their time and their services. Um, so we see the importance of having a willing heart. Um, in 1 Chronicles 29, when the people of Israel were building the temple, um, the, the David, you know, we're referencing David again, um, he's with the people orchestrating that great event. And the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 29, it says, Then the people rejoiced. For that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. You know, it's, it's important to have a willing heart. Willingness in our giving, willingness in our service. You know, we've seen as a church what can happen when we willingly give our time and give our efforts, give our service. We just put on a huge ladies conference last week, um, and there were so many moving parts. So many, so many people that were willing to jump in and help, whether it was... You know, financially, whether it was giving their time or, you know, putting in some effort to decorate or whatever it was, you know, whatever the case, we got to see firsthand what can happen when we put our hearts and our minds together willingly in the service of God. We've seen it in Nehemiah. You know, Nehemiah and the people of Israel, they rebuilt the walls in a record time simply because the Bible says they had a mind to work. You know, they had a mind you know, to get out there to do the job. You know, they were willing. They were willing to do the work. Um, I know I'm preaching to the choir, you know, you're here on a Wednesday night, um, by no means am I saying that we're not already doing this, but it's just important, you know, that we stay behind our pastor and his vision for this church and for this community. Um, he has a direction that he's trying to lead us, and it's our, it's our responsibility to get behind him full force uh, and to be willing, you know, to catch his vision, to stay faithful, to do all that we can to accomplish what God has laid on his heart for us to do. Amen. So number one, we have the type of heart. We have to choose what type of heart we are going to have as a spiritual heart. Number two, I see the amount. We have to choose, number two, the amount of heart that we're going to give. Now, this is a very simple one to say. Very simply, the amount of heart we're supposed to give, we're supposed to give all of our heart, our whole heart, to the ministry and to God and to God's service. We already read the verse in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 13. The Bible says, ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. You know, God promises that if you seek after me, you will find me, but only and only if you seek for me after or with your whole heart, with all of your heart. You know, it's very easy to see or to tell when someone is not giving their full effort. I already mentioned that, you know, I work with Brother Tyler with, with the, uh, the basketball team in the, in the school. Uh, I work a little bit more closely with the junior varsity, the JV guys. It's very easy to see and to spot when someone is not giving 100%, especially when there's only, only you know, 12 or 13 kids on the team, there's no hiding from us. We're, we're pretty much everywhere. It's a big old gym. You can pretty much see everybody. There's only 12 or 13 kids running around. It's very easy to spot people that aren't giving 100%. Um, and so this giving your whole heart, it applies to the Christian life as well. You know, just like we see, you know, we can see when a basketball team isn't giving their best, the Bible relates our Christian life to a race in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. Um, it's actually our theme verse for the Masters Club. Um, we're focusing primarily on the theme is keeping your eye on the prize. That's our theme for Masters Club. But that verse relates our Christian life to a race. And if, we, if it's easy for us to tell if someone is giving 100% on a basketball game, you think it's evident to other people when they look around and say, you know, I don't think he's giving 100% with his Christian race. You know, it's, it's not right for us to judge, but sometimes it's just pretty obvious. You know, it's very evident. It's easy to see. Um, it's important that we give our whole heart when it comes to serving God. It's, it's very vital when it comes to seeking after God. We keep relating everything back to our personal walk with God. Um, if you would turn with me to Psalm chapter 119. Psalm chapter 119, longest chapter in the Bible. 
has much to say about the Word of God, has much to say about the heart. Psalm chapter 119, verse number 2. The Bible says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. And look down at verse number 10. The Bible says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Twice in the span of about 10 verses, you know, the Bible references seeking after God with your whole heart. You know, your whole heart, the amount of heart that you give, it goes hand in hand with your relationship with God. It goes hand in hand with how you serve God. Turn with me to Joshua chapter number 22. Joshua chapter number 22. Joshua chapter number 22, verse number 5. That's where we're going to look. <clears throat> this is after Moses has already passed off the scene. Uh, Joshua is now in command of the people of Israel. In Joshua chapter number 22, verse number 5, the Bible says, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Right there, you know, Joshua is saying, you know, it's required of you that you serve God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. I just want to ask, how much effort are we really giving tonight in our Christian life? It's easy to, to you know, find a routine, you know, to kind of get into a groove. You know, and eventually, if you're not careful, it kind of goes, it becomes going through the motions. You know, especially um, in college, you know, we live busy lives, as many of you do already. But it, it was even more so because you had this, the comfort of, you know, hey, I'm, I'm in a Bible college. You know, I hear preaching every day. It became very easy to kind of get into routine. And pretty soon, there wasn't a personal relationship with God. It was just a personal relationship with everyone around you during the chapel service. You know, it became very easy to get into a rut, into a routine. So it's very important that we give our whole heart in serving God. And we're either all in or we're all out. Philippians 4, chapter number 13 tells us that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. But on the flip side of that, John 15, 5 says that without me, speaking about God, Jesus is talking, says without me, ye can do nothing. There's no in between. There's no middle ground. Either you're all in and you can do all things through Christ, or you're all out and you can do nothing on your own because you're trying to do it without Christ. There's no in between. There's no middle ground. There's no, I can do small things on my own. There's no, you know, if I, if I do this right, if I plan it out long enough, you know, I'll be able to, to, to figure it out to get it done. That's not how it works. There's no in-between. You're either all in, and you, you have the ability to do all things through Christ, or you're all out, and you can't do anything because you're trying to do it through your own power. Any element of mankind mixed inside, you know, leads to a flawed effort. We have a hymn in our, in our songbook. It's called, it's simply entitled, Our Vets. Uh, in the words of it, kind of back up the message that we're trying to get across here. The words go like this. It says, Hear ye the Master's call. Give me thy best. For be it great or small, that is his test. Do then the best you can, not for reward, not for the praise of men, but for the Lord. Every work for Jesus will be blessed, but he asks from everyone his best. Our talents may be few, and these may be small, but unto him is do our best, our all. Um, that's a hymn that we often sing. Um, it's very important. It just goes to show that you know, God deserves our best. You know, he gave his best when he sent his son to die on the cross for us. You know, that's, that's more than any of us have ever done for someone else. Um, God gave his very best for us. The least we can do as broken sinners is we can give whatever we have left to give our best back to God. Amen. Um, it's, the, it's the least we can do. And so the opposite of giving your whole heart is very simple. You know, anything less than your best is either a cold or a lukewarm. And we know what the Bible says about those that give a lukewarm effort. Uh, the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, the Bible says that God would spew them out of his mouth. He said that I would rather you were cold or hot, but you being lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Now, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that Temple Baptist Church is a lukewarm church. I'm just challenging us to make sure Let's not be a lukewarm church. Let's give our full effort, our focused effort in serving God in this place. Because God will bless. God will bless those that give a full effort. Amen. Um, so number one, we have to decide the type of heart that we're going to have. You know, what type of spiritual heart am I going to have for myself? Number two, we have to choose 
how much of our heart we're going to give. Are we going to give all? Are we only going to give some? And number three, we have to choose how we protect our heart. We have to choose how we protect our heart. Um, Jeremiah 17, verse number 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, Amen. and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our heart, in and of itself, there's nothing good in it. It's wicked, it's deceitful, and there's nothing good about it. Uh, but when we got saved, you know, God gave us, you know, He saved us, He cleansed us, He gave us that clean heart. Um, but the devil is constantly bombarding us as Christians today. Um, and there's so many different uh, avenues that he can use, different pathways that he can use for temptation, um, and to present sin to us. You know, the first Peter chapter 5 tells us that uh, the, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Um, he's out to get us. You know, Jesus told Peter, you know, he's out to sift you as we. Um, and so it's very, it's vitally important, it's, it's essential for us that we set up some safeguards for ourselves, that we protect our heart. You know, Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know, whatever is in your heart will be revealed, like it or not. The um, Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You know, whatever is in your heart will be revealed through your words, through your actions. Um, everything that we do is a result of what's in our heart. Matthew chapter 15, verse number 19 says that our actions are a result of what's inside of our hearts. Um, that's why it's so important. You, know, you, can, you can live a double life. But it's always going to be revealed at one time or another. And the Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. And whatever you put you into your heart, it will come out at one time or another. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll get away with it for a while. But the Bible promises that it will be revealed at one time or another. Um, so it's important for us that we protect our heart. Now, how do we protect our heart? Well, very simply. Number one, I say we should memorize Scripture. You know, it seems elementary, but it's true. Psalms 119 Back in Psalm 119, verse number 11, the Bible says, Thy word have I hidden my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. Amen. Now that, filling our hearts, filling our minds with God's word, keeping that meditating, keeping that flowing through our mind all day, if that's what's coming out of us, if, if our heart produces our actions and our words and our thoughts, you know, if we fill our hearts with the word of God, our product is going to be a whole lot better than if it's, you know, the television or the internet or whatever else it might be. Um, so that's number two. Be careful what you view. You know, Lamentations tells us that mine eye affecteth mine heart. That's right. You know, whatever you see, intentional or unintentional, you know, it will affect you. Once it's inside of your mind, once it's inside of your heart, it's there. You know, you can't get it out. There's no, there's no delete history button for your heart. You know, you might be able to do that for your internet history, but there is no delete button for your heart. Once it's in there, it's in there. So be careful what you view. You know, my eye affecteth my heart. What you see, what you hear, That's it affects you. And it will be revealed, like we already mentioned. And then last, give no opportunity to the flesh. Romans chapter number 13, verse number 14, makes this statement. It says, um, to make no provision for the flesh. The full verse says, uh, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Give yourself no opportunity to do wrong. Don't put yourself in a compromising position. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a position where you're tempted to do wrong. That's right. um, it, it's, it sounds too simple, but it's as simple as it is. Just don't put yourself in a position where you can compromise. Don't put yourself in a position that you know maybe you are weak in a certain area and you know that. Well, don't put yourself in the vicinity right. where you have the opportunity to fall to that. That's what that was saying. Don't give an opportunity to your flesh, your sinful flesh, to fall. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we have to make the decision. We already said no, our human heart, our human heart is involuntary. We get no choice in whether our heart beats, you know, how much blood it pumps, how many times it pumps, you know, whether that electric system keeps working, keeps our heart, uh, this rhythm in order. You know, we have no choice in that. We have no control over that. But we do have the control over our spiritual heart. We get to make the decision each and every day, each and every moment, you know, will I have a heart to know God? You know, will I have a clean heart? You know, will I be right with God? Will I have a willing heart? You know, willing heart, that, that's something that's very easy to change. You know, it's very subject to change. Um, you can wake up one morning and just not feel it. And you go, like, no, nah, I'm not doing that today. No, nah, nah, I'm not going so early tonight. You know, it's very easy. So we have to make that conscious decision to have a willing heart. We have to make the conscious decision to protect our heart. You know, to put those safeguards up for our own life so that we will please God with our hearts, that we can have that relationship with God that He so desires to have with us. 
And then also, we have to make the decision to give all of our heart to God. You know, give all, give our all in the service of God. Give our whole heart. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. If you would please bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to have a word of prayer.